So for your course, we're going to start as we would have if we had completed everything. We're just gonna tick on January. So if you go to your course, you'll notice that at the beginning of January, we start block six. So we're gonna be tackling modals, can, could, would, should, and in your units, you should be practicing from this section, all right? Now, of course, I'm gonna be sending people individual feedback, but before I started doing that, I wanted to, of course, welcome you back. Hope everyone had a good holiday. Um, if you were able to rest, if you were able to spend time with family, I hope you got to do all of those things. All right, now we're gonna continue using Zoom. We're gonna continue using your portal. Um, we're gonna be doing very similar things. So as you can, you can see, we're gonna be using the format similarly. I'll be opening a forum today so that you guys can practice and you'll be completing your work, creating your folders, updating your folders online, just as we were doing before. Um, we're just going to jump ahead to the first unit in block two, which is English six on your portals. Now, in addition to starting from here, um, some of you had asked before, will we consider what we were doing? Yes. We'll consider everything we're doing up to a point. So we were going to start modals before, actually. We were going to start modals around the 18th. But we didn't start modals around the 18th. If you remember the last class we had together, this is basically where we started. We didn't do all of the modals. We looked at some, we looked at have, we looked at should and must. And we used the material that we normally dive into to take a look at modals in general. So from there, I'm gonna continue, I'm not gonna use the same source material anymore. I'm gonna use some different stuff and we're gonna focus on some other modals. So we looked at have to, should, and must. Now we're gonna focus on can and could and other modals of ability, okay? All right. It's now 8.03, I believe everyone is in now. And let me see if there's anyone in our WhatsApp group trying to find the link. Let me double check. I think we're all good. Right, so first things first, guys. For attendance, full names and groups in the chat. And we will start getting into our activities for today. So once again, welcome back. We're gonna be doing unit one, modals and present perfect continuous. So how do we match? The two, how can we use can, could, would, and should, and tackle those others, present perfect continuous, in the other classes we have in January, All right? Now, let's see. Good. Thank you, Paula. Full names and groups in the chat. Now, it goes also, um, or it is worth saying that if you have a new conflict based on your courses 
this semester and you need to make adjustments for your English class. I will have classes at 8, at 9, at 10, at 11, and at 12. All right, guys, so make your adjustments. Let me know what you need so that we can advance together. All right. As I mentioned, I wanted to do something a little bit different this year. So I'm going to use some different material. All right. Let me stop sharing for a bit to make sure that everyone is in. Here comes Alondra. All right. So we know we want to practice can and could. So let's start with can and could. Right. Now notice when we use can and could. As it's highlighted here, we're going to be focusing on using it for ability. All right, so we're going to take our times to go through it. And see if we can get everyone involved in practice today. All right, so let me move my screen up there a little bit and the names. Let me use the cameras. Right, so in order of who I'm seeing in the room, Mario, Eileen, and Saul. Let's start with you, Eileen. Which picture matches which sentence? All right. Which one is for picture A? And read the sentence for me, Eileen. Um, A is a squirrel can climb trees. Good. Climb. And if you know the action, going up, usually for trees or mountains, that's climb. One more time, Eileen. A squirrel can climb trees. A squirrel can climb trees. Perfect. Right, Mario. B. Okay, B is I can play chess. Perfect. And Saul, C. The baby cannot walk. Good. Now, what do we notice? We notice positive sentences where ability is shown. And of course, we also have one negative sentence. Now, if we remember from what we had done before, the structure of can and could, these words are meant to talk about abilities, all right? And in the positive form for can, all we need to do is use our verb plus a subject line. And for the negative form, can plus not. All right? So we'll come back to that one. That's your subject line. That's your affirmative or negative line. And your different verbs. Now remember, your subject line can be any person, place, or thing, or a pronoun. And your verbs can be any verbs that you want. That shows ability. I can play, you can read, he can paint, she can't work, it can't cook, we can't run, they can't walk. All right? So that's the positive and negative forms of the verb. Now let's dive in. Let's start with, let's see who this is, with Paula. 
Let's start with you, Paula. Let's look at the uses again, but now specifically for can. All right. When do we use can, Paula? Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Um, uh, can. Se pronuncia can. En términos generales, su significado es poder y es usado para distintos propósitos que veremos a continuación. Habilidad en el presente. She can speak Japanese. Ella puede hablar japonés. Permiso. Can I call you Andrew? ¿Te puedo llamar Andrew? Solicitud. Can you help me tomorrow? ¿Me puedes ayudar mañana? And yes, I am doing it on purpose to share more Spanish scaffolding because last year, like, teacher, I don't understand. So, hope this little bit of matching Spanish and English will help you. All right? So, that's can. Ability or asking for permission or assistance. All right? Now, can is very common in the language, and we're going to be seeing it a lot. All right? Let's continue with our practice. This time with Gustavo. Gustavo, can you complete sentence two? As you can see in the example one, we use a subject line. Notice we have an article, a cheetah, so one cheetah can run fast. We're combining can plus a verb. So notice, all right? What's the completion for number two, Gustavo? Yeah, kangaroos can jump high across the grass. Perfect. All right. What about you, Isabel? Number three. Humans can't live underwater. What? All right. We need air. And although there's air in water, there's more water than air. Allison, number four. This man can stand on his hands. Perfect. All right. The abilities. All right. Now let's reinforce some more when we use can. But now I want you to practice the same ideas now in English. All right. So who's going to volunteer to read for us? Let's go to Leslie. All right. When do we use can? Can for ability. We use can to show that something is possible. Some turtles can live for hundreds of years. We can also live, pause, live. Live for under hundreds for of years. Right. We also use can to show that we know how to do something. She can run 10 kilometers. Kilometers in one hour. We use can to show that something is not possible or that we don't know how to do it. Pigs can't fly. Perfect. Thank you, Leslie. Now, let's continue creating the sentences with can and can't. Think about it and then choose the right option. Rafa, let's continue with you. Okay. Con el primero, ¿verdad? O yes, con todos. Dogs. No, just one. Okay. Dogs. Podría ser dogs hide in the grass. All right, but what's your what's your can plus verb combination? Dogs. Dogs can, can hide in the grass. I think that's a good combination, but I see a better combination. How about ah, dogs no, no sé, no sé qué can significa swim bark and ah. grow? Yeah. ¿Qué significa? <laughs> bark is the sound that dogs make. Roof, roof, bark. Okay. Right? And growl is not really to get your attention is to warn you. So dogs do two things. They go roof, roof, or they go grrr. That is the growl sound. All right. One example also, you could say dogs can swim. 
If you go to the beach with, with your dog, dogs can swim. So good example. All right, so three possible options. Let's continue with, let's go back down. Dun, 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 dun. There's a few of us, so we can have a lot of fun today. Let's go back to Mario. You give it a try. Okay, uh, cats clean trees. <laughs> okay, cats can climb trees. Yes, they can. All right. I think cats can also hunt small animals. Like if you have a rat in your house, your cat can hunt. All right. Good. Um, Saul. Sería snakes and swing. You can do negative as well. He cannot read and write. Yeah, exactly. Snakes can't read and write. They don't have any hands. All right. What about Paula? Give it a try, Paul. You can try with humans, D. Ah, okay. Humans mm, can swim. We can swim. Not all of us. <laughs> we can swim. Some of us can swim. Good one. Um, Isabel? Um, sharks um, can't climb trees. You're right. They live in the water. All right. And Allison. Monkeys can climb trees? They can climb trees. Yes, they can. All right. So that's can and can't. Positive and negative or affirmative and negative sentences. All right. Let's continue with some more practice. Gustavo, back to you. Yes, I can come to the cinema with you tonight. All right. Coming otra? Uh, I'm just going to change the screen to see some more people. Leslie, you again. I'm from Paris. I can speak French, but I... Can't speak Italian. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. All right. Not sure if you can hear us, Alandra. I see that your internet is giving you trouble. Let us know if you can hear us and if you want to participate. In the meantime, let me go to Isabel. Some cars can't run on electricity. Yes, yeah, some cars can run on electricity. Good. And Alien, number eight. I like this hotel, hotel. I can see the beach from my window. Perfect. All right. So notice how we tackle ability. Let's keep going. Um, back to Raphael. Okay. Mm. I can ride a horse, but I want to learn how to do it. Exactly. I cannot or I can't, but I want to learn. Good. All right. Alondra, can you hear us? Is your microphone working? Good. All right. Try one. Can plus one of the verbs. We have ride, we have play, we have meet, and we have hear. Um, the primera sería, I can ride a horse. Would I want to learn how to, to do Good. it? Good. And the second one, number 10? Uh, Tom and Melissa can meet you at the coffee tonight. At the cafe tonight. Just be very, very careful. Meet us. Okay. 
Good. All right. Um, back to you, Mario, number 11. Robert can the piano very well. He is a pianist. Good. He can play the piano. All right. And number 12, Isabel. Let's mix it up a bit. You are speaking too quietly. I can't hear you. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to jump ahead to question form. All right. Remember when we're asking questions, we generally do two things. We either start with a question word, which is very easy to remember, what, when, why, how, who, or we can use our helping verbs. Modals are helping verbs, so we can start a question with a modal. For example, here we see can at the beginning of the question, All right? So help me here, Alison. Let's match this time questions with the images. A is, can you see the mountains in the distance? In the oh. Yes, indeed. Good. All right, Gustavo. B is, can I come with you to the beach tomorrow? Indeed, indeed. And Saul, number C. Can Rachel play backgammon? Backgammon, yes. Don't feel bad. I cannot play it either. <laughs> Unless you can. All right, so that's the question form. The goal there is to start, of course, your question with your modal, then you have your subject line to tell who is speaking, and you need your active verb. So modal, subject, then active verb, and then the complements of your question, All right? Now, when do we use this can in question form? Notice here, we're saying that we use it when we're asking for permission or we're trying to get help, All right? Let's dive in a little bit deeper. This time, read for us, Paula. Yes, using can for permission. We can use can to give permission or to show that we have permission, permission to do something. Mm -hmm. Can for permission is very common in the spoke the spoken English. Did you ask your mom and dad, can you come to the basketball match on Sunday? I can come this weekend. My parents said I have to study for the exam. Good. So notice the question and the reply. All right. Both of those will use our modal. All right. And the form is the same. Let's practice some questions. Alison, you first. You're trying to create a question with the clues you have, right? Let me give you an example. Um, with A, we see the two people on a trail. So more than likely, they are hiking. Can you go hiking next weekend, for example? Yeah. Allison, try with Andrew in B. Can Andrew borrow his dad's car? Exactly. Borrow. Repeat. Can Andrew borrow his dad's car? All right. I hope his dad doesn't mind, right? And let's get some of Alondra back in the game. Practice with us again, Alondra. Question form. Uh, 
es, tengo que hacer una pregunta, ¿no? Sería... Exactly. Eh, ok, sería... Um, um, Bob go to the beach. Exactly. Right? And last one, Rafa, D. Sería... Can Tristan go skink? Mm -hmm. You can add time expressions like tomorrow, next week, next year, after the holidays, after school today, on Sunday, right? To make your sentences more complete. Now, questions in general, you are looking for uh, having a clear idea of whether it's possible, someone has the ability, or you can get permission or not, all right? Let's see who I can twin. Someone is trying to get into class. Yes. Someone asking if we have class today. Um, mm, mm, mm. Let's peer Mario and Leslie. All right? Leslie, you are the you in this operation. And Mario, you're replying as Peter. Okay? Leslie, start us. Oh. Hi, Peter. How's everything going? Well, well, thanks. Hey, we are going to the opera tomorrow evening. Can you come? Yeah, sure. I can defini definitely come. What time? Well, we are going to eat dinner first at an Italian restaurant. Meet you at 7.30 p.m. Sorry, but I can't come at that time. Of course. Can you meet you at the ticket right, office? Be careful. At... be careful, be careful. Sorry, but I can't meet you at that time. Can I meet you at... Leslie, again? Sorry, but I can't come at time at that time. Continue. Can I? Of course. Uh, oh, can you meet you oh, at... Hold on, Mario. The sentence continues, Leslie. Can I... I... Sorry, but I can't... But sorry, but I can't come at that time. Can not I meet you at Opera House later? Of course. Uh, can you meet you at the ticket office at 9 p.m.? Great. Hey, can I bring my friend? Sure. See you tomorrow night. Perfect. Right? You could even throw in a, yes, you can. See you tomorrow night. All right, so this is a full dialogue of can, can't, and question form. I'm going to go forward now to Let's see if it's included in this one. No, I'm going to jump over to another one, All right? And so quickly show you could, All right? Now, if can is telling you ability, then of course could is doing something similar, except could is generally considered to be the past, All right? So that's one of the big differences. We do more or less the same things with can, but the time that we're speaking in is different. The tense tackles a different idea, All right? So if this is can, talking about the present, if we go to the past, so to speak, then we can use could, All right? 
So let's tackle it first in Spanish. Saul could. Could se pronuncia could. Es la forma del pasado de can. Si quieres, puedes ver en, en un video sobre cómo usar can en inglés. Había en el pasado. When I was younger, I could play the piano very well. Cuando era más joven, podía tocar el piano muy bien. Permiso o si solicitud formal. Could I turn a party tonight, please? ¿Podría hacer una fiesta esta noche, por favor? All right. Now, notice with can, we're talking about abilities. Same thing for could. With can, we are talking about permission and requesting help. Same thing for could. The slight difference between and can and could is that could is more formal. All right. Alison. Who's in the past form of can? For possibility, ability, and permission, we use who, who, as the past of can, of can. I can come to the restaurant tomorrow evening. I could, could do my homework last night. Before she came to Canada, Sophie couldn't speak English. Now she can speak it. Speak it very well. Good. Now the same is true about the negative and positive forms of could. It will work exactly the same. All right. Remember to put your subject line. Remember to put your modal verb, and remember to put your active verb. All right, and if you're gonna switch to question form, then start with could. Could you, could I, could he, and you move your could to the beginning and then match with your verb, all right? Practice here with me, Alandra. Could you please read me the minute? Uh, could uh, you please open the door for me? Yes. Could you hold the phone, please? I will just get him for you. Good. All right, so that's the question form with could. Let's match. Let's start with Rafa. Hey, hey, can you please pass the salt? Good. Eileen? B, could you ring a bottle, bottle of mineral water? Great. Gustavo? C, can you look after the children tonight? Perfect. So can and could work exactly the same. Just consider one to be more past and formal, and the other one is present and more informal, right? That's basically how they work. Now, you noticed also that this unit tackles would and should. Now, in our Previous class, when we did modals, we looked at would and should. We, sorry, we talked about would. And let me show you if you forget. You, I'll share it in our link again. We go back to this link. We had tackled all of these modal verbs. And some of the very common ones were these, the should and the would. And the uses for them were they are more pronounced than can and could. We use would, particularly when we're doing conditional sentences, and should when we're giving um, suggestions. All right. Now, of course, let's take some time to look at them here as well. 
So that was can and could. Let's now go down to dun, 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 dun. would. All right. And here, practice for me, Paula, would. Ok, good. Se pronuncia would. El, el modal good no tiene una traducción en español. Los verbos que van después de esta palabra adquieren un sentido potencial o hipotético. I will run every morning. Yo correría cada mañana. They could buy a house. Ellos comprarían una casa. She could paint her bedroom. Ella pintaría su habitación. Okay. All right. And that's why we use this particular form for conditionals. Conditionals where it's not true, like an unreal conditional. For example, if I won the lottery yesterday, <laughs> I would buy a house today. But I didn't buy a lottery ticket, so I don't have a lot of money, so I will not buy the house. But for these hypothetical situations, when we are imagining or it's an unreal condition, we will have this, um, this form come up very often. All right, so that's wood. And let's browse quickly. Let's look at some of the forms. I'm going to jump all the way down to wood. We saw might the last time, but this time we want to practice wood. All right, so that's the first time you see it appear. Formal polite request. All right, so let's start here. Who has not practiced as much recently? Let's go with Mario again. Third line, would you? Would you? Um... Third line. Okay, uh, will you turn off the television? All right, so when you want to make polite requests, structurally, the it's the same for the modals. They don't change. You will always have them in the same way, would and the verb. So what you need to remember is how to place them and when to use them, all right? Isabel, can you spot the sentence here that where we can use would? for a polite request? Mm, o sea, empiezo con el would. Uh -huh. ah, ok, ya no Would you open the door for me? Uh -huh. um, respuesta? Um, of course, and do you want some help with your bags? Perfect. All right. So notice the person is making a polite request and they get a polite response. All right, same thing here. Gustavo, would you? Would you help me up the stairs? Of course, but you can also take the elevator. Perfect. All right, so wood is nice and polite. All right, now the goal with wood is there's not necessarily something um, past and present about it all the time. It doesn't necessarily feel past or present, but would is the past form of will. So the same idea that you think about when you think of will, you can think of the past form when you think of would, 
All right. And the other one that we wanted to tackle, and let me just rush a little bit, is should. All right. This time, Saul, should. And should he ought to. Mm -hmm. Se pronuncia should he ought to. Estos dos verbos modales en inglés son sinónimos y se pueden traducir como deber. Should es más común que ought to. Ambos se usan para dar consejos y sugerencias. You should call your mom and say you are sorry. Deberías llamar a tu madre y decir que lo sientes. You are going in. You ought to go to the doctor. Estás tosiendo. Deberías ir al doctor. Okay. All right. So both of them function the same. Auto is very old school, but you will see it particularly in written English, giving advice. All right. And let me just close this one out and show you some examples of should. All right, the right thing to do, so to speak. Help me here, Isabel. John has a cold. He should take us take some medicine. Okay. Alondra, Rachel. Rachel uh, has an exam tomorrow. She showed the story today. Good. Eileen, Ashley. Ashley is tired today. And she showed study today. Okay. Well, if she wants, she wants to pass her exam, she should study. But if she's tired, she should. She should, should study today. If she's tired, no. If she's tired, it means that she wants to sleep. <clears throat> Where do you sleep? Not me. Where? Mm -hmm. Location. Okay. You in your bed. All right, so if you're tired, she should go to bed. Repeat. She should go to bed early tonight. All right. All right, well, when do we use should? Rafa, help us. Um, excuse me, uh, I read? Yes, to give a suggestion. To give a suggestion? To say something about a uh, duty or responsibility. Okay, to give us a, a suggestion, you should eat more fruit and vegetables. It is a good thing to do. And to say something about a duty or responsibility, you should feed the cat. It is an important thing to do. Should, should is a model verb like can, could, must, have to, etc. All right. So those are the moral verbs that we're tackling in this first unit. I'll open up the forum so you can show off your talent once you've practiced on your portal. And of course, if you need help with anything, just send me a message. Welcome back. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful new year and a very, very successful um academic school um, semester and well, this is the first of many lessons to come see you next Saturday guys I'll send you some info of things to practice and all the best take care